watching Anna. Uh, this is Lux. Leah. I don't really know how to pronounce this. I can't I can't decide if I want to pronounce it like it's French or not. But <laughs> regardless, we're watching Anna on uh, Silver Five on Oasis. I do not know if this is console or PC. This is my first VOD request I've done, so anything is appreciated, really. Uh, they attached two VODs, uh, one loss and one win. Uh, we're going to be doing the loss in this one. Uh, they are Anna as a main, uh, Kiriko slash Zen, uh, secondary, and then they usually play one to two friends. All right, so we're going to begin. We're just going to roll out. Um, something to think, keep in mind is... Uh, I always tell people is think about whether or not you're the main healer, like the maybe we should call it the tank healer. Are you the tank healer or are you the DPS healer, right? So in this lineup, you're definitely the tank healer. Mercy is always a DPS healer unless something really weird is going on, <laughs> um, like you're running like Mercy Zen or you know Mercy Lucio. So typically, you're expected to stay with the tank, keep the tank alive, and Mercy's job is to keep the DPS alive. Obviously, if you have space, help the other ones, but primarily your job should be to keep the tank alive. So initially you're already making a mistake because you're kind of doing your own thing, right? You're going to the left. You should really be following your junk, uh, your queen here because you want to make sure the queen has enough health to do her job. You going to the left is a problem because, for example, if she gets into a fight in this room, you'll be completely unable to help her. So this is already a mistake and you're wasting time hitting the glass, which you shouldn't do. See, she also can't help you because you're off on the flank right now. So you have taken both of the supports away from the fight by just simply not going the correct direction, which is just following your tank. I agree with this. I think you had to had to get him off the off angle. So I think what you're thinking of is try to kill him with a grenade. But there's like no way that you could land. Like it would be an extraordinarily good nade to be able to hit this. I would have just saved date here. And don't worry about it. Your Hans is looking at it now. So I would again focus on what your job is. Your job is to keep the queen alive, right? Like make this very simple. Silver five, just keep the queen alive to help you win the game. So one of the problems you'll notice here, like you may not think about this because you're probably newish on overwatch but because your queen gets low she's forced to pop shout to just stay alive which is a mistake she does not want to use shout to stay alive she wants to use shout to run at the back line but because she's not getting any healing and she gets really nervous here right she's probably like what the heck why am i not gonna healed because it's been like 10 seconds of gameplay and she hasn't gotten any healing because you've been over there kind of messing around if you <laughs> you would heal her up she could probably just shout run past the ride and go kill somebody but because she doesn't get healing she can't use shout offensively, which is used to, for just basically 100 damage and to like run away, which is a really poor usage of shout. So something something to think about. Really, really, really important is just keeping tanks up so they can do their job. Now you don't have grenade. Again, lots of great grenade opportunities, like throwing a grenade right here, splashing the Mercy, and the Ryan probably wins you the fight. You're a grenade right now. I would throw a grenade. Ryan's back is to you, so throw the grenade. It's extremely unlikely that he's going to spin and stop this. You should throw the grenade. Throw the grenade. All right, you threw a grenade. <laughs> it's late now, but that's okay. Sleep's a way off target. Like this, this sleep, this is like a sensitivity problem. Like it, you can tell from your flick aim. So a, a sleep, reasonable sleep is somewhere in this general vicinity, right? Like close-ish. Look where your sleep actually goes. So you see, this is like quite far away from where the Rhine is because your flick aim is just not there. <laughs> just something to note is that Improving your flick aim is, is, is important, right? Especially for, for, for Anna to for land sleeps. Nothing you can do about that, really. It was your uh, mercy job to keep the soldier alive there. Yep, you should work on the uh, Hanzo. So you're getting shot from your left. So as soon as you felt the shot on your left, right here, so you have no tools to deal with it, right? You don't have, you know, sleep or anything. You should have run forwards and cut around the corner to the left to keep yourself safe. Instead, you throw a nade, which you also should have saved for yourself at the Rhine. The Rhine's not really close to dying anytime soon. You really need to keep yourself alive. You should nade yourself and walk around the corner. You're completely not reacting to the soldier who should have killed you. I don't know why he runs away, you know? Like, <laughs> this is what Silver 5 game, like, there's no reason the soldier, watch from the soldier's perspective, because this is like how silly this is, right? Shoot you. He should have helix immediately, right? Then he's 13 bullets. Like, literally one bullet will kill you right now. <laughs> well, I guess uh, two bullets. Um, you are very lucky that the soldier decided that he did not want to kill you today. Right? And again, you're not taking real cover. Right? You understand your left off angle is, is open. The correct place. Because you cannot run down this hallway and get here. Right? 
Like, the only reason you, you got that is because the soldier just chose not to kill you for some reason. You just simply just walked in here, and the Mercy can help heal you. Is it safe on the point? No, but it's safer than where you were. And your goal as a support is always to move to not, like, what is literally the safest spot, but, like, the safest spot that you can still do your job. Um, I feel like you saw... Yeah, right there, you saw the Kiriko healing. So I'm going to slow it down for you. So I would have noticed this at, at full speed, right? Because I noticed it right now. So right here, right? You clearly see uh, the Kiriko on your screen, and you could have taken this opportunity to, <laughs> to just double tap and kill her. You can tell right now that no one on your team is low, right? Because first of all, you would have heard shout. You said you can see the green health, A. B, you could, if they were low, they would flash as critical, like be a different color on your screen. So you could just two tap the Kiriko right now and make a huge play to win this fight, right? You kill the Kiriko, this fight's over. It's just a splash. By the way, the Kiriko could also kill you very easily right now because you're hard scoped. Like, she just go stand here and go headshot, headshot, and you're dead. Not your job to deal with that off angle. Right? Like, if the soldier's looking at you, not your job to shot. As soon as you start shooting at you, immediately unscope and, and run away. Like, you should be dead right now. The only reason you're not dead is because the soldier, like, does not have helix rocket. So, when you're going to reload, reload as you start rotating. Right? Over here, this is your opportunity to reload. You see how long you wait? And now you start your reload. Which means you don't have the opportunity to heal the jungle finger. You should take a shot. Uh, so... Try not to hard scope so much, right? You're like too reliant on the scope. So the moment that you see the ride go up and you see this animation, unscope and get ready to dodge the fire strike. It does a hundred damage, which is like not trivial. <laughs> you miss sleep, that's a big sleep to miss. You also missed the grenade. So right here, you should have targeted the nade at their feet. The uh, I guess I, I guess what happens here is actually so it slams into your Junker Queen on her backside because it explodes on impact and it doesn't hit the ride. So you have to make sure to splash it like not directly at the hero. This is like this is a complex thing. Um, I don't know if I agree with this Nano. I'm trying to like read the situation. So I guess it's, it's three on the four. Yeah, no, I don't I don't agree with this Nano at all. Right? So you've already lost two. <laughs> You're down one right now. Your Junker Queen is not going to be able to fight through a pocketed, a double pocketed ride. Like, it's just not going to happen. Right? So you see, this Nano's not going to give you any value. The Dragon does, but the Nano doesn't do anything. Like, technically, it made some space, but you could just wait for your team to regroup. It's like lucky the Dragon killed the Dragon. Um, so tracking Shatter is really important. I would expect Ryan to have Shatter every two fights, for perspective. Um, good Ryan's will, will have Shatter every, every two fights. So that, that was like a really, you know, you had that, that first dish fight, and then you came back, and then um, second dish fight. But it was, it was a long, long, or one very long first fight, I guess. Just to look at it, because I don't think you actually died. Oh yeah, so close. Uh, you could have, like, that's actually an opportunity for a nade splash, right? Right here, you could have chucked the nade and tried to get the kill. I think that's a fair nade, because the pick here is big. But definitely don't hard scope right there, because the Hunza's not going to peek you until he gets healed. You know what I mean? And you're not, it's not like you can one-tap them anyway. Like, Anna's not, this is not like a tactical shooter where you're like, oh yeah, I'm going to instantly kill him when he comes on the corner. Anna, first of all, does damage over time. It's not instant. <laughs> Second, only does 75 damage. So, you, so, like, once he starts getting healed, there's just no way that you can kill him. And then because of this bad challenge, you get killed by this Hunza. This is a really, really bad challenge. You should have just, as soon as, he, like, when he went behind that, I would have chucked the nade and then just left and rotated and played back to, back to the main default spot. Don't challenge. So, this is what I tell people who want, people love challenging as, as supports, and it's, like, so silly. If you were playing a competitive 1v1 shooter, and the enemy only had to hit you once, but to kill you, and you had to hit them three times to kill them, would you think that was a balanced game? Would you be like, oh yeah, this makes sense. I totally want to keep playing more of this game because I think I'm going to win. Obviously not, right? Because you're like, 
they can kill me in one hit. I have to kill them in three? Like, high is the spare. That's what I tell people who try to fight Hanzos and Widows. They only need one hit to kill you or, or pocketed Ash, right? Why would you tr try to take this fight, especially when you're scoped and you're super, super slow? You see, from the Hanzo's perspective, you're just standing still, <laughs> right? When you're scoped, you, you move so slowly that you're effectively standing still. So that's a big stagger for you. So now your team has to wait for you. Your Ramatra's forced to pop Nemesis, which dramatically reduces their ability to do anything. Now the soldier is dead, so the stagger continues, and then you die to, to Hanzo again. Why? Because you're just hard scoping in the back. You need to scope less when other people can see you. Like, as a general rule, if the enemy can see you, you shouldn't be scoping. Right? You could have done this healing by staying over here. You're so obsessed with like trying to deal. Uh, I mean, I guess maybe this is influenced by Awkward, right? Because Awkward always says damage, 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 damage. But the thing is, like, there are certain fights. <coughs> I mean, I'm not saying that I'm any Oracles as good as Awkward is, but there are certain fights that make sense, and there are fights that don't make sense. All right? I do not think that that Awkward's advice, I haven't seen any of his stuff, but I assume that his advice does not apply to Hanzo taking fights against Widows and Hanzos who are actively trying to kill you. You know, that's that doesn't seem like I don't think I don't think awkward is in GM trying to fight other GM widows and Hanzos who are who are looking at them at the spot that they were it's hard scoped trying to kill them. That does not strike me as good advice if that's what he meant. I think he means in general try to get poke damage in when you can do so safely, or potentially use it to turn a lost fight. But these none of these qualify as, as those scenarios. Like. This damage is okay, but I think I really want to keep my soldier alive here, right? If I have the choice between doing 75 damage to an enemy or healing and keeping a teammate alive, I think the choice is to keep a teammate alive. And I, I'd like to believe that Awkward would also agree with that advice. <laughs> and maybe if you think Awkward's going to say separately, you should get Awkward to review the video because I, I don't really feel like the damage makes sense in, in this context. I feel like the the advice is mostly around just not heal botting all the time as Ana, um, versus like like don't only heal like heal and when no one needs healing damage. That's kind of my philosophy on on on, on Ana. Um, I, I think it makes a lot more sense. All right, that's a, that's good sleep. Right, so I would follow up this sleep immediately with a nade. I wouldn't even hesitate. I would immediately chuck nade here because he's in the middle of my whole team. He's gonna die as long as I need him. If I don't need him, he might stay alive. But if I need him, he 100 percent dies here. So you hesitate, which allows the rhyme to get away. Also, your sojourn gets killed. She probably would have lived if you grenaded because she would have had that splash as well. Now you nade, but now it's too late because the only person doing any damage is the Ramatra and to some extent the Hanzo, but the rhyme can shield off the Hanzo because the Hanzo is really far away. Right Before, you had three people on different sides of him, but now he's too far away for you to do anything about this. So... You have to move forward here, right? You're running out of time. You have to move forward. So from here, like before this fire strike happens, right? You just reloaded. I would walk down here, heal the Hanzo. I hear the Moira over here. I'd help clear the Moira out. Then I would try to kill the, Mo the, the uh, Mercy. But you have to advance here. Like you moving backwards right now, like let's just kind of watch your movement, right? Like you have no context of like what the what the situation is. Like you have 10% less on the, left on the point. Like you have to advance right now. It doesn't matter what is going on, you must run towards the point. So, again, I think you could have killed, you could have saved this junk rat if you'd been further up. Right? He jumps in the air. If you were up here, you would have seen the jump, you would have seen him get a hit, then you would have healed him while he's in the air, and then he would have survived the one shot. Because he nearly survives this. <coughs> yeah, he's 100 health. So he died by literally exactly enough damage. If you'd hit him at all, even an instant before this, like even like 0.1 seconds before this, he would have lived. And then you would have one extra person going through this fight. Visor's just popped. So when you hear Visor, especially at this late stage, you have to peek and go for the sleep. Otherwise your team is going to die. Like you can tell the, the soldier, like you would hear him on your right, you know that he's going to peek out this way. You have to go for the sleep here to try to win the game. Right, so you just try to shoot people through this, like it doesn't, and it doesn't work. If any, if at all, like after you throw, after you slept, I then, if assuming you missed it, I would throw a grenade and then try to shoot him to death. That's the time where you should do damage. Right. So first round's over. I, 
I would say that the things that really stand out here are one, you're taking really bad fights consistently, right? The Hanzo's just picking you over and over and over again. Like, I don't think you know how, how many how many deaths should you have in a control point round, right? The correct answer is somewhere between zero and three, maybe, maybe three, right? Um, and like, I don't know how many deaths you picked up here, but like quite a few. Um, and they're always like, you're getting picked first in like crazy ways that are just not, not a good idea, right? Just because of like, just these like ego challenges where you're just trying to, trying to <coughs> fight people that you just don't need to fight. And I feel like your perspective maybe from walking, watching Awkward is I have to fight people to, to win the game, which is not true. I, 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 I like fund, I feel like this is actually legitimately bad advice or like the way people are interpreting is bad advice. You can win games by simply keeping your teammates alive. If your teammates are invincible, I guarantee you they will win the game. <laughs> like it is not, people, your teammates are not that bad. They can't hit like the broad side of a bar. If you keep your teammates alive, they will win the game. But you let so many teammates die, A, and B, you yourself are dying a lot, which is dramatically reducing the impact you have on the game. All right, let's watch round two. So again, right, playing with the Mercy, your protector should be the fall of the Romantra. So as soon as I see that Hanzo at the corner, I have to get I have to get worried, right? Like I'm like, did he did he Sonic? Because he Sonic there over here, then I'm gonna be super visible and I can get headshot over here. So I may not be like wanna hold this angle for that long. I definitely would not be hard scoping right now. I would be trying to to do uh unscope and like try to see if I need to shift over to the right to the left side to prevent the Hanzo from shooting me. This is tough. Um, this happens pretty fast. So you would have heard the soldier drop to the right. You eat the fire strike. That's the, really the big problem. Is as Ryan, I'm always looking for fire strike, and because you're not, and this is kind of like a reaction speed problem. But as soon as you see that <coughs> motion where he starts winding up, like you had the opportunity to dodge this by simply staying to the left, and you should have dodged it. And then after you eat this fire strike, you're so low that your instinct should have been to immediately grenade yourself. But you don't, and then you get killed. So again, preventable. Definitely harder to prevent than the other ones, but if you want to climb into, let's say, gold, this is something that I would say a gold level player would do fairly consistently, is survive in that situation. Just do the better, a combination of better reflexes of do either dodging the fire strike, uh, hitting the grenade before they die, or both. So this is an example of front mining. Okay? Your mantra has gone to the left, which means there's no longer pressure on the front which means these DPS are now free to shoot. You should not be walking up to the top of the stair, right? I would go no further than here and like kind of zigzag with like only your head visible. Cause like here, you see how hard it is? Let me rise up a little bit. Like if someone's standing here, like it's fairly difficult if you stay like just keeping your head above the stair, staying here is okay, right? And maybe you can heal your matcher or maybe you can kind of poke at them, but not any further up. But in reality, you walk way far up. You should be dead right now. Again, hard scoping. I just don't think you should challenge the hunter this much. <clears throat> like, getting damage in is great when people aren't killing you. If people are killing you, then you're not doing it correctly. <laughs> it doesn't matter how much damage you're doing. If you're dying, then you're not doing it correctly. Again, this is a great example where, like, the Hanzo's storm arrowing. So, like, just throw the sleep and cover. Your Ramacha's already on him. He's gonna die no matter what. You don't need to get this kill, but you risk almost dying here for no reason. <laughs> like, all you had to do was simply just kind of let your Romatra do the work after you realized that he's aiming at you. Now you kill the Mercy. Now you should be damaging, right? Now, that was like a huge opportunity to kill the Mercy. Right here, right here, 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 here. She's running a straight line, right here. And then finally she dies. And then you eat that Fire Strike. <laughs> like that Fire Strike, you really shouldn't have eaten. It's like very obvious. You have plenty of time to react to this Fire Strike. But you're just kind of like on autopilot, like moving to the left. And the second fire strike, I bet would have killed you if you actually threw the fire on this. Did he just shatter the? <laughs> okay, he just. <laughs> I just want to play it over again. All right, so so. 
This has nothing to do with you. I just, I just think it's really funny. So we're watching. So Ryan comes out. Like the shield goes up before he shatters. This is not a reactive shield. The shield's already up, and he just shatters. Ah <laughs> oh, man. Okay. This is this is why you're all silver. It's because of stuff like this, right? Everybody, everybody's gonna make mistakes, but it's it's like funny to watch still. So this is a bad nano. Why is this a bad nano? First of all, they already wasted an ultimate that got literally zero value. From a morale perspective, that's often very damaging, but usually the team plays around that timing, right? They expect a certain ultimate to go out, they all advance, they all get aggressive because they heard the Shatter get out, then they realize the Shatter didn't happen, and then they're out of position. Like, for example, the Soldier, who's grossly out of position. But B, the Ryan was super low already, right? You see how low he, because you, you're there, you're shooting him, right? He gets super low here. You don't need to pop Nano. Like, this, your, your Ramacho's got this. Like, you don't have to worry about it. He's, he's got this. Um, you can pop Nano later if you absolutely have to, but you're fine. You should have saved Nano. Alright, Soldier out of position, as I said. Yep, heal up. I mean, I don't know why your Ramacho's going. That's an opportunity to kill a Mercy. Again, like, when you do have good opportunities to kill people, you're not taking them. Right? This right here is a solid opportunity to kill the Mercy. You shouldn't be looking at anything other than the Mercy right now, because all of your teammates are full health. You can see, right? They're all full or nearly full health. You don't have to worry about it. Even your Ramatra, who you can't really see, is still being pocketed by your Mercy, so he's not going to die. You should kill the Mercy right now. She ends up dying anyway, but instincts like that are important to cultivate to climb. Okay, some weird stuff's happening in the background. Don't front line here. See, this is, a, this is a mistake. You're like crazy overextended. Just look for the Ryan's perspective. If I go here, I'm like, why is the Ana this far up? You know what I mean? Like, you are very extended. Like, you should never, like, you shouldn't have expected the Hanzo to keep going here, right? You kind of need to predict where your teammates are going to go. You should just stay here, right? Or, or been here to begin with from default, and then just healed your Hanzo if necessary. You walking over here has now put you in the firing line. You walk in so he can get a double fire strike on you for no reason. Now he charges. Unfortunate Suzu timing. Don't get closer to him. You do not want to get closer to him. You see, you know the, <coughs> the problem <laughs> that I, I, I say to some players where it's like, you can't walk and shoot bubblegum, right? When you are looking at a target and shooting at them, you can't help but walk towards them. Like if a target's on your left, you have to drift towards them to keep, to keep attacking, right? Figure out how to disentangle your movement from your aim. Right? If I'm shooting at a ride in front of me, I do not need to walk forward. I can just play backwards, even unscoped. I think scoped, you're okay, but like unscoped, you see how you keep walking towards the ride? You're getting closer and closer with every shot, which gets you closer and closer to danger, and now you die. <laughs> right? It's like, this is like super basic stuff that is really, I guess, now this dragon. Did you, were you wrecking the dragon? Uh, maybe you're wrecking the dragon. I can't hear in the replay, which is why I might hear this. But I don't think so. Based on the fact that you walk back into the dragon, I don't think you're reacting to this dragon. I think you, I think that's a clear reaction to the dragon, right? But previously, it, it feels like you just happened to be doing it, right? You could have looked behind you after you start taking damage and be like, okay, how close is the dragon? But then now you're too close, and then you eat the Ryan swing and you die. So again, very preventable death. All you had to do was just step forward slightly, not all the way into the Ryan swing range. Our team's doing a good job contesting. I was a great job considering that you've been dead the whole time. It's fine, keeping people up. I have a grenade here, yep. This is a good grenade opportunity, right? Crank it to the Rhine. Unfortunate, not really a lot you can do here. So Tracer doesn't have Blink right now. So really important in duels is to throw your grenades such that you get hit and they get hit. That way you get the health back. Now that you don't have any health, this is like a really hard fight for you to win because you're super low. Tracer has an advantage and then kills you. I was going to say, please don't get hit by this fire strike. <laughs> Yeah, don't get shot by the cure go. This is a fine challenge if you want to do that. Yeah, yep, yep, this is a good challenge, right? Like, there's a shield there in front of you, like, it's fine. So you should have heard the Rhine charge right now. You should step up and immediately start your sleep animation. That way you're ready to do something about it. Um, and then it would, it would be coming out right about now, and you would have an opportunity to save. 
it's a tough play. I wouldn't expect silver players to make that play. I probably wouldn't expect gold players to make that play. That's probably like a plat level um, move is I would expect that out of. And when I, say, when I say expect, I would say somewhere between 50 to 75% of the time, at least, they, they would hit it. Um, I, at silver, for no way would I expect the silver player to like recognize, like have the audio cue, recognize what to do and execute it. At gold, they might hear the audio cue, but like completely with it. <coughs> Or like pull it out like too late, for example, if they hit the wall. But at plat, I think that's that's starting the rank where I think there's a pretty consistent chance of that happening. Because ultimately, this is a really bad play by the Rhine, right? This is a blind charge where he has no idea what's there, and he just full sends it. Gets lucky enough to grab the Hanzo while he's ulting, and then pins him into the middle of the whole team when there's an Ana on the team that easily could have slept him. It's very, very lucky that he did not die here. Oh, boy. Okay, so Pulse Bomb's going to come out here. And then you see the pulse, right? You see the big, you know, error, you know, warning sign. And then you walk forwards here. I think, again, part of your habit when you shoot unscoped is you walk forwards towards your target unnecessarily. Like, you, as soon as you saw pulse, your reaction should have been to back up. But you walk into this and you get blown up and killed. <coughs> get rezzed. I would be careful with the Ryan turning back on me. Shoot the Mercy now. Right? You get three bullets. One, two, three kills the Mercy. One. Uh. Uh, okay, good effort, but um, you, you missed two, which is okay. I mean, they're reasonably close, but the grenade is very short. You should check this grenade deeper in. Hopefully, it also hits your Ramatra. Yep, good sleep. All right, look for a nade if he's not. Yep, great. Ugh. There's no reason to hide inside the point. Like right now is the time where you should be out here. You know, there's there's no reason to be standing in here. It's fine. Like just one dart to the Hanzo and go back to, to healing the tank. Mm. Okay, grenades off, sleeps off, but you're gonna win anyway. So we'll we'll take it. All right, last point. Do you follow your tank? You do. I would say you're learning, but obviously you don't have to hurt me when you're playing this game. Alright. Keep me your mantra up. Tracer is low. I would have tried to right-click uh, scope and, and target her for a quick hit. I wouldn't shoot Ramatra Shield for damage ever. Ramatra Shield doesn't last very long, and it's a thousand health. So it almost... I, I play Ramatra. Like, I've been one-tricking Ramatra for like 10 hours now. I don't know that I've seen my shield break more than once. <laughs> once or twice. Basically, like, a damage-boosted or nanoed Bastion at point blank is pretty much the only time Ramatra Shield ever breaks. I don't think it's worth shooting Ramatra Shield at all. Like, save your ammo. Or just reload. Again, Nate's too short. Yep, stay out of that. So you've already lost one, so you're probably not going to win this fight. Just try to farm ult charge, keep your team alive. You're reloading too much here. Right, you're 124. You could just peek this and left, which is a pretty safe angle. Right, you can even re peek right. Like, you landed a good purple here. Right, this grenade was much better. So, like, you could re peek right now. I know the, the, the Ramatra's attacking you, but you could re peek this angle, and, like, you could one tap. Uh, <laughs> the the tracer is one tappable. The smur is almost one tappable. She'll have like two health left. The <laughs> symmetra is two tappable. <clears throat> so you got you got options here. Oh boy, it's fine. Just grenade. Don't panic. So Ramatra takes four punches to kill you. For the record. Right, does 80, 80 damage a second. Um, so one thing to to recognize is, assuming he's chasing you in like this, first of all, think about how to maximize the amount of health to survive as long as possible. Number one, I have the mini here, so step back, get the mini. Number two, right, I should try to get away from from this opening to make sure that I can't get shot by any else. Number three is that I can then nade myself, and number four, my mercy will heal me. There's no way you should die here to the Ramatra. There's just it's like 
almost mathematically impossible to die to the Ravatra here. But when you step back in here towards the opening, then you should have died. You should have died right here. But if you played like, got the mini, came back and just played right here, you should have been totally fine. Alright, Hansel's dead. So you saw, you see how you've lost track of your mantra for a while? This is a bad idea. Also, I would have gone for a sleep out here, because the sleep out here could have resulted in the kill. Don't front line. Get behind your tank. Yeah. Also, generally, just don't get close to Ramatra. Don't get the tank close to tanks in general, but definitely don't get too close to Ramatra, because you can punch through your whole team. Yep, save your mercy. Good. So this is a bad nano. Why is this a bad nano? Number one, Ramatra's too far away from the enemy doing anything, right? You don't want to nano Ramatra here. You want to nano Ramatra here. The closer that people are to the enemy, for pretty much all heroes, they do more damage. A. B, your Ramatra just finished Nemesis form, which means the form that he's best able to hunt people down and kill them, which is on cooldown for another 8 seconds. So you pop Nano right now, and your Ramatra's like, uh, you see how he even hesitates? Where he's like, do I even go forward now? Because what is he gonna do? Like, now he's just shooting a shield. Right? Now he walks forwards. Like, he did almost nothing with this Nano. Because the Nano's gonna end in a second. He did maybe 100 damage before the Nano expired. So very, very low value uh, Nano. So, sim walls up, you know, good, your Ramatra's not walking through it, that's a really common rookie mistake. So, coalescence out here, again, just line of sight it, right? Don't try to run away. I think it's really common for players to panic, be like, oh, let me try to run all the way back to spot. No, because then you get an angles for the hunt you down. I would literally just sit here and zigzag, right, back and forth at the tree. Because it will be really hard for her to consistently land the, the beam on you. And so what she'll need to do is she'll need to run all the way up and then try to beam you this way. At which point I would then do Ring Around the Rosie with the tree. But if she comes up here, it exposes her and the rest of the team to, to crossfire from your Hanzo here and your Ramatra here. Now, whether that will actually save you is a different question, but that's the best move you got here. Right? So again, it's like you needed yourself and you ran backwards, but you've also given up a ton of space to do so. Right? It would have been way better to stay up here and then nade the Moira or whoever else is following you and then get kills. Versus now, you just lost space and time and gained no advantage out of it other than not dying to Coalescence. But I like you would die to Coalescence anyway if you just bring around the rose of the tree. Uh, for, for Tracer, I would get used to quick scoping. At this distance, I would quick scope, right? Quick right. Uh, like right click scope fire right then unscope right away and you can jump too to maintain some movement during it that's the only time where I would condone jumping don't stand in line with the Ramatra <laughs> like the punches go in a straight line like you literally he's just punching the Ramatra here and then you see how you walk into that punch right like there's no reason like he's only punching the Ramatra if you just stayed to the right you were totally fine there you walk into his punch and he would have gotten another punch yeah See, you're in a straight line, his punches hit both of you. You just need to know what the ability, enemy abilities do, so you can stay alive. I want to defend. <laughs> your team's getting pretty much rolled in this round. Um, how much of that is your fault? I mean, I think first point, for sure, I think you made a lot of mistakes, and honestly probably deserved to, to, to lose that round. Um, oh yeah, you did lose that round. Uh, this point, <laughs> I would say, I don't, th <laughs> I don't think your play deserves to lose. But it, you certainly didn't deserve to win, right? The Nano was the really big one that should have helped your team win the point and given you more chances to, to win the game. And when you completely whiff the Nano, that removed a critical tool that your team had, like a win condition, to try to try to win the point. Yeah, see, now you're in big trouble. I don't even, I'm not even going to give advice on this because there's nothing you can really do about this. Okay. So, recapping, I would say... Number one... Don't die. <laughs> like, the number of deaths you have right now, cut them by, like, 50%. Uh, I would say 50, 50 to 75% of them are, like, entirely preventable. There's, like, literally no reason that you should die. They're, like, very silly mistakes, and it's a grab bag of, like, random things, right? Like, walking into fire strikes, trying to challenge, like, a Hanzo looking at you, walking in, into a Rhine so that he can swing at you. Stuff like that is just is getting you killed all the time. Um is is number one number two uh is generally don't challenge snipers to fights right shoot people who can't like shoot you back you know shoot a tank right shoot a reaper you know shoot a lucio 
fine. Those are great. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead and do those things. But don't fight snipers, right? Don't fight anybody who can kill you quickly from a distance and learn who those who those uh, who those heroes are. <coughs> um, number three. Obviously, better sleep and grenade usage is going to be true from now all the way through Grandmaster, right? Always looking to get more value from your grenades and sleeps. I talked a lot about, like, when should you throw them, when shouldn't you throw them, and having them available and getting really strong value out of it, very, very important. And then lastly, covering nanos. Um, understand, like, what is a good nano? And I think <laughs> the more you play other heroes, like... Uh, tanks and DPS, you understand like what a good nano is versus like what is a nano that what, that's like entirely useless. Like your Ramacha was like clearly not prepared for the nano and couldn't do anything with it. Like if I was the Ramacha in the situation, I couldn't have done anything differently. Like it doesn't matter. Like even like a GM Ramacha, you put them in that situation. There's nothing they could have done with the nano. They had no abilities up and they're too far away from the enemy. Uh, so I think those points will go a long way towards helping you climb.